Hello and welcome back. Okay, this is the second video in terms of exponential functions that we want to be talking about. And in this particular example, uh, we're going to be taking the skills that we learned from our last video and uh, just developing them a little bit more. So just as a bit of a recap, okay, we talked about the basics of the exponentials. One, when we have the power being positive and we ended up with growth where the curve uh, grows higher, okay, and how to do that with a table of values. And then we talked about the decay curve where the curve goes down. And that's what happens when we have a negative power. Okay. So, all right, what happens when we have a little bit of a harder curve to try and manage? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this particular example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we would go and do the table of values. And then what we're going to do is we are going to uh, take a bit more of a speedier approach to graphing these curves to capture the important information that we need to. Okay, so first things first, here's our exponential curve. We know it's an exponential because we have an X in the power. However, out the front, okay, you'll notice that we have um, a three multiplying by the curve. So when we go and try and complete our table of values, it behaves in much the same way, not much changes, okay? For example, when I look here uh, at x equals 1, okay, right? For example, x equals 1, I put it into the rule, y equals 3 times. There's a little times hidden in between those two, okay? 4 to the power of 1, we end up with 12. So the first one is 12 for uh, x equals 1. Doing the same thing with x equals... Um, x equals 2, we end up with y equals 3 times 4 to the power of 2, and that is equal to 48. So it's not a nice pattern in terms of uh, what we had last time where we have doubling each particular time or tripling or anything like that, okay? So there is a pattern behind here. We won't focus too much on that just for the moment, okay? What happens when x equals 0? Well, when x equals 0, we'll just work up here in the top left, we have y equals 3 times 4 to the power of 0. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is just 3. If we follow on with that pattern and we do do that over and over again, substituting in all of the numbers, okay, we'll end up for x equals 3 of getting 192. And for x equals negative 1, we end up with 3 quarters or 0 0.75, okay? Now, you'll notice that we end up with very, very large numbers very, very quickly, which makes it much harder to graph on a, our usual Cartesian plane where we might not have scales that are that large. Okay, so how do we go and graph this? Well, the first thing to do is you go and look here. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, the first thing to go and do is you look here, right? You look for where x equals zero. Now that's going to be this vertical line going along here. Okay, that's your y axis and that's where your y intercept occurs. So that one there is your y intercept. Okay, now, that means when x is equal to 0, I want you to first put the point on your y-intercept, which is 3, and just make a mark for 3. Now, what I want you to look at is whether or not the curve is increasing or decreasing, okay? And the easiest way to look at that is look at the number inside of the brackets and the power, okay? So you'll notice that the power is positive, therefore it is going to be a growth curve. It's going to be going up. Now, because we're just doing a rough sketch to go and establish behavior, Okay, what I want to see is I want to see it following the exponential behavior where it goes higher like so. It doesn't need to be an exact curve. It doesn't need to be to scale too much because we're going to add in a little bit of extra information. Now we need something in there that's going to tell us um, what point that it goes through. So step one, we find the y-intercept. Step two, we check whether or not it's a growth or a decay curve. And step three is we need what is known as a reference point, okay? So for a reference point, you just need to pick one of the other points from your table of values. Any one works, but I like to pick nice, simple ones. And you just put that point on the curve, okay? Oops, sorry, I'll get out of highlighting. So you put the point... 1, 12, to just tell us that that is the curve that goes through, and then you label it, okay? So that's the fast way of going to draw your exponential curve um, when you have really, really large numbers that are happening and you're just establishing a pattern. The only other thing to remember is to draw an asymptote going along 
the horizontal axes, right? And that's at y equals zero. That's where the curve approaches, but it doesn't touch, okay? So just running through that again, the first thing that you want to draw is your y-intercept, and that happens at x equals zero. The next thing that you want to do is you want to check whether or not it is growth or decay, okay? Next thing that you want to do is you want to do your reference point, and then finally you add in your asymptote, okay? All right. Now, part B of the question is not too bad. Part B asks us, what is the y-intercept? Now, we already know this, okay? But that is where x equals zero, and we know the y-intercept is at three. Something that you might notice, however, now that we've got this number that's sitting out the front, okay, for our particular curve, we have y equals three to the power of, uh, sorry, times four to the power of x. You'll notice that the y-intercept is the exact same as the number out the front. For an exponential curve, when x equals zero, the y-intercept will always be that number out the front. And you'll see this pop in a little bit um, a little bit later when we go and do some harder styles of questions. It is always going to go through whatever that number is out the front when it is just your basic exponential curve. Okay? So... All right, your y-intercept, I often just write as y-int, that is equal to three, okay? So your final part of the question here is part C, okay, which is explain why there isn't an x-intercept. And we can see clearly from our curve, it's going to approach this asymptote, but it's never going to quite reach it, okay? So for that, we just say there is no x-intercept. So there is no x-intercept. I'm not just going to shorthand that to x-int. Okay, as y equals zero is an asymptote. Okay. All right. And the curve will never touch it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put all of this information together. Okay. And we're going to understand... Uh, this as a summary. So there are two different cases. You have exponential decay. We mentioned that before. Okay. We have exponential growth. So exponential decay occurs when we have a negative power. Exponential growth occurs. Okay. When we have a positive power. Decay goes down. Growth goes up. Okay. So we need to be really, really careful here. This only happens when A is positive in the bottom. Okay. Okay. Um, because we don't have bases that are negative when we do that, okay? The y-intercept is always the number out the front, as we can see here. That doesn't change across the curves. I'll skip this second dot point for a moment, and I will talk about that in just one moment. The x-axis is an asymptote, so as we did mention, that's where y is equal to zero, and that is just the horizontal axis here being an asymptote in both cases, okay? Okay. Now, what does it mean the curve is decreasing unless A is a fraction? Now, being careful that the fraction is between uh, 0 and 1. So, for example, right, if A is between 0 and 1, a fraction, say, for example, is like a half or 0 0.7 or something like that. That is a decimal, but we can convert that to a fraction. What will happen is it will do the opposite of what we expect. For example, when we look at the power... Okay, we would expect that to be a decreasing function. Instead, it will become a increasing function. If A is a fraction, I'll show you in just a moment what we mean by that. Same thing over here. If we look at the power, we would expect it to be an increasing function. But if it is a fraction, it will change to be a decreasing function. So what is an example of this? Okay, here's an example down below. What does it mean for A to be a fraction? That's the base of the exponential. So if I look at the 0 0.7 to the power of x, 0 0.7 we can rewrite as a fraction, okay? That's equal to 7 over 10, and it is strictly less than 1. It's not negative. We can't have a negative base. But there are some things that we can point out. The first thing that we can point out is the number out the front. Remember how I mentioned it to you, right? That is going to be our y-intercept. So we know for our y-intercept it should go through 3, and this is confirmed by the graph on Desmos. Then you'll notice, well, we would expect this curve to be increasing by the definition of the power being positive. However, A is a fraction, so it does the opposite, okay? Which means that it is going 
down. Just be really, really careful, okay? If you're not sure, back it up with a table of values of X and Y and picking a couple of values to check what happens to establish a pattern, okay? All right. So in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where we go and apply exponentials, okay? These are the basics covered. Let's talk about that, how we apply them to real-life scenarios in just one moment.